<laughs> Hello, my, my name is Patrick Allen, and I'm an interviewer for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. And today is November the 5th, 2022, and the program is uh, conducted uh, through the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library, and the director of the program in Cincinnati is Brian Powers. With us today is my wife, Mary. She's uh, doing the video for us, and we are pleased to do an interview of Otto Winning. And thank you, Otto, yeah. for doing this. Nice to meet you, Pat. Um, and we're at, we're at his home at 8537 Weller Road in Montgomery, Ohio, which is uh, uh, just outside of the city of Cincinnati in southwest Ohio. And uh, with us is also his wife, uh, Alice. She is listening and watching, and uh, we may ask her if she has any comments that she likes to make or any questions she likes to ask. So. Before we get into your military, uh, let's talk about your background. Uh, when were you born, Otto? Uh, born in uh, <coughs> 1935. And, and what and, date? Uh, on the 25th of June. 1935? 1935. All right. And where were you born? I was born in uh, Palembang uh, on the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. All right. And when you, while you're talking, you can look at the camera. So oh, okay. That, you're, you're the one that people want to see. Oh, you yes. <laughs> So, uh, why were your parents in but Sumatra? My my father, uh, well, first of all, uh, we are all Dutch, you know, we're uh, from okay. origin. And uh, my father was sent to uh, Indonesia as a sp to, because he was a spice broker. Okay. He uh, uh, was one person for that company that he was working for uh, to to uh, find out what was available in, in spices in Indonesia and made contracts with with growers and okay. and then uh, shipments back to the Netherlands for processing. Good. So, do you yeah. know how long he was there before you were born? Uh, you been we, living there for a good while. Yes, we were there for quite a while. Uh, about my before I was born, there he was there five years before Warrior was born. Where where was he born? Was he born? He, he was born in uh, Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. Okay. Do you remember when he was born? Remember how many? I'd, I'll have to. I may have to look that up. You, you were born in thirty-five. So about how old was he? Nineteen oh seven. Nineteen oh seven. Nineteen oh seven. Correct. Uh, what was your dad's name? My last name was Albert. Albert? Albert. Middle initial? No, we don't no. have any. It's just Albert Weening? Albert Weening. And how about your mother? What was her yes. name? Antonia Weening. Uh, and do you know how old she was? Uh, she was She was born in 09? Yeah. That's what your wife is telling us? Absolutely. Good, good. Um, I may have difficult remembering all of it. That's a lot of stuff to me. <laughs> a hey, lot of stuff to be remembered. Hey, that's quite all right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, born in 35, you're about 87? I am, a, yeah, uh -huh. I am 87. Okay. Um, how long did you live there in Sumatra after you were born? Uh, I lived there for 10 years. Uh, did, you go to, did you go to school there? No. No, uh, it was in 1930, 1940, 1939, the Japanese came to All right. to uh, Indonesia and occupied and tried to take over the government uh, there and interned all the, the Dutch people into concentration camps. Oh, okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, how about uh, brothers and sisters? Did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I had a sister named Astrid and a brother named Walter. It's W-O-U-T-E-R, spelled a little bit differently. And your sister was Astrid, A-S-T-R-I-D? Correct. That's correct. And uh, Walter's... Uh, Walt, Walter, Walter is uh, uh, three years younger than you? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And. Uh, Astrid, uh, she passed away. Yes, 
Yeah, she passed away. She passed away, and she was what, 75 ish? 75, and yes. So, where does, where does Walter live? He lives in uh, North Myrtle Beach. He's retired. What did he retire from? He was working with my dad, so spice industry. Okay. You know, spice, little spices. And how about your sister? Uh, what did she do outside the home? Anything? She she was married and had kids, and and she didn't really work anywhere. So. Okay. So your dad was in the spice business. So when did he work for just one company, or did he work he, for a number of companies? No, he worked for one company. What was the name of the company? It was Cats Cats uh, Incorporated. Cats. Cats. C A T Z. Incorporated, and they were stationed, and their home office was in Amsterdam? No, in Rotterdam. 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 So when, when did your dad retire? My dad never retired. He didn't? He, well, he, he, he was semi-retired. Well, you know, he, he, he stopped working. Okay. But he got ill and uh, had difficulties, and so he, my brother and him uh, coordinated uh, the business and... When, when did your dad pass away? Passed away, Alice. We'll have to give you that number. 12, 22, 92. 92. 92. Okay, and how about your mom? Uh, 98. 1998. 1998? Yes. <laughs> All right, so tell, tell us about uh, your, your experience uh, being interred by the Japanese uh, during the war. Tell me about that. Well, uh, Initially, the Japanese came to uh, Indonesia and tried to overrun every island there was. And uh, obviously, they came to us, and we were living in Padang, uh, in Sumatra, P A D A A N G, and uh, were told to pack up and uh, go to a. a uh, Cloister in in Padang to uh, to be, be, be well, we were told to go there, and eventually we were all put together, and uh, from there we went into the, into the existing prison in Padang. All right, and and so we were all put in in in, in the prison over there. Okay, well, yeah. what what kind of a, a residence did you have when the Japanese uh, asked pretty, you to pack up? Pretty nice. Was, was it a, was some it a villa. Single, single family home? Yes, a villa. Okay. Uh, very nice place. Uh, and when the Japanese came and told you to pack up, uh, did you have any warning that they were coming? Well, yes, we uh, we did, because we had a bunker in, in our garage. And, uh, okay. Because they were bombing, you know, throwing some bombs around, so, and then eventually they took over. Well, when when they told you to pack up, uh, how much of your belongings was the family able to pack up and take with you? Whatever you could put in your hands. That's about it. You Nothing didn't much. have boxes or suitcases or anything. Heck, no. <laughs> okay. And where did they take you at first? When you left your home, where's the first place you went? Went to the cloister. The cloister. Uh, in in uh, Padang, a religious, uh, a religious structure. Well, yeah, the cloister was a big, big area with all kinds of buildings. So and was that for for nuns or priests? For nuns and priests. Do you know what uh, denomination the nuns and priests were? Those Catholics. It's a Catholic. Uh, okay. Priest. And how long did you stay in the cloister? About sixty days. We were packed in wherever we could stay, and that's it. Sixty well, days, we we were moved out. Well, t tell me about your experience there. What what accommodations did you have for living at the cloister? Were, were you the family by yourselves in a room, or were you just in a big room with everybody? We else? were in big rooms and uh, with, with with whatever we had, and we were sleeping on the ground on the floor. So sleeping right. on the floor. Correct. Mm -hmm. And how about food? Uh, what kind yeah. of meals did you get? They had some food, but it wasn't very much. It started, you know, they tried to get us food, but they weren't very uh, organized in order to, to do this, so. Well, how old were you at the time? Were you four six. or five? You were six? Mm-hmm. So that would have been in 41? Correct. Yeah. 
So after you left the cloister, um, where did you go? In the prison, in the existing prison in Peidang. So Peidang already had a prison for the a bad real, characters. A, a real prison. <laughs> so when you went to that prison, what kind of uh, accommodations did you have there? We, we slept just like the prisoners do, on, on, the, on floors. and. Uh, were they segregated cells? Were they, were they cells? They were cells, but also... How many uh, families I, in a cell? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember that, but... Uh, but you're it, sleeping on it, the floor. It was very... The accommodations were very good. I mean, they... Uh, you had as, as, as much as you could get. That's it. A lot of people in there. How about, how about packing, clothing? How about clothing? Yeah, your clothing was the clothing that you had on. That was your clothing. They didn't provide any clothing. So you had to wear the clothing that you left your home with. Correct. No change of clothes or anything. Well, we washed them. They were we sure. able to wash them. That's about it. We we didn't have anything really. How about shoes? Did you have shoes? We did have shoes. How many meals a day did you get when you were in the prison? Uh, two meals a day. Two. Yeah. And uh, where did you take those meals? Was there a mess hall? No, the, way you, uh, the, the meals were taken wherever you slept at the, that point in time. Did some uh, guard bring it to you or did somebody? No, you have to, had to go get it yourself. Get it. All well, right. my, my mother did because okay. uh, we, you know, we were small, so we did. my mother brought it in. But uh, the portions probably were not very much, were they? Not very much, but, but good enough to be so that you could exist, you know. Your mom and dad, did they make out okay health-wise while you were imprisoned? My mother, my, initially, yes, we did, okay. uh, initially. But my dad wasn't there. My dad was taken somewhere else. Oh, he wasn't with you? Nope. That was not a family deal. Do you know <laughs> where he was taken? He was taken to uh, the upper part of Sumatra in a, a camp where he was, where they organized him to work on the railroad. So he was in a labor uh, camp. That's correct. And that was the railroad from Aceh to Padang. So when, when you left your home, the Japanese took you from your home, did they take your dad right from you at that time? No, my dad was already gone because they already, they had, he had to, he had to uh, go, he was directed to go into another place. Before you, before we, the rest of the family. Before we, yeah, we, they, we, we, we. So, uh, w when was it that your family got re reunited? Three and a half years later. <laughs> and did your dad work in that labor camp all that time? Absolutely, yes. And how did he look when you saw him? Had he lost a lot of weight? Absolutely, he was skinny as a rail. <laughs> did he have any injuries, or did he talk to you? He, about did, he, he did not really have injuries, but uh, he was he was not not very well it, at it that time. Practically no. worked him to death. Almost, yes. All That's right. what he did. So, um, you you stayed in the prison camp for what three and a half years? Uh, in, in, the, in, in the jail. In the, in the jail, we stayed there for six months. Six months. And then where did you go? Then we went to a camp that was uh, built in, in the jungle uh, between Padang and uh, Maidan, uh, which was specifically designed to put, put in prisoners. So uh, that was just a concentration camp for that, that civilians? That was a, a, another concentration camp, yes, correct. Uh, did Sumatra have uh, have a military? No, no the, the military was the the, the Dutch m military. The, the, the Dutch had their military, and of course they had also Indonesian military. Were were those folks uh, imprisoned with you? No. The only ones that were imprisoned were the ones that were either Dutch or or not, uh, you know. Natives, or as natives of of the of the of the lands. Okay, so how long did you stay in that concentration camp? That we stayed there about two and a half years. What accommodations did you have there for sleeping? We had barracks and uh, you know barracks that were laid sort of up and down barracks, and uh, we had 
accommodate. Uh, we slept on, on wooden planks. I mean, that's it. Slept on planks? And, 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 our, and whatever we had, still. <laughs> um, how about food? Food was centralized in the camp. They uh, had, had, a, had a kitchen a kitchen in the camp. Okay. And that kitchen supplied the food for, for everybody that lived there. How was the food? Uh, that was not very good at all. Yeah. No. For, for a little boy, it sure wasn't good, was it? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, it, was, it, was, it was bad. It was not enough. They, you know, it was very rationed and so forth. Did everybody in the family lose weight while you were there in the concentration camp? Yes, we did. Did uh, any of your family become ill while you were in the pro camp? Not really. Not good. Really. We um, made it. We made it. <coughs> what were the sanitary conditions in the concentration camp? They were uh, adequate, but not not no, not the best. Okay. They were very makeshift. How uh, about water? Did you have access to water? Yes, plenty fresh of, water. Plenty of water. Water came from the mountains through there and. We had plenty of water. Did you have a stream that ran through the camp? That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, it, did you have drinking water out other than the water in the stream? No, no. So how did how did you get uh, out of the camp? Uh, did, well, did we the were uh, allies for you, or what? That is a that's a very good question uh, because. The, the reason that the camp, camp was closed is because Mr. Truman dropped the atom bomb on the Japanese uh, in Hiroshima, and that, the war was over after that. So because of that, all the Japanese were told to leave and get off the islands, and they did, and we were free. Well, how did you learn that the atom bomb had been dropped? Uh, I don't really remember that because my mother told me that the war was over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. And uh, when when that when that news went around, was there celebration in the camp? Absolutely. Do you yeah. remember what took place? Uh, everybody was just happy as as the Dickens because they knew we were going to get out, <laughs> uh, and it was time. A lot of people died in that camp. From, from certain from disease? illness, illness, malaria, and other diseases that they picked up over there. So we were very lucky to be coming out of there. Do you have any idea how many people were in that camp uh, at the peak of population? I was told 2,000. So, do you know how many were still alive when the war ended? No, not really. But I mean, a lot, a lot of people died. Uh, so what did they do with the people that died? They uh, they built uh, you know the regular uh, the uh, cemetery uh, containers and they took them off off out of the camp and from there on I don't know. Okay. You don't know if they buried them or burned them or what they did with them. No, I don't. I don't. So when the Japanese left, uh, were there any Allied uh, troops in the camp? Uh, uh, at the Allied, the English, as a English? Fact, they, they came and and liberated us out of the camp. All right, and then together with the people that by my my dad's organization in that camp, they consolidated and helped to get us out. Okay, and uh, we went from there directly back to Padang. So when when the war was over and the English. Uh, consolidated the camps. Is that when you saw your father? Yes. Uh -huh. and w w what was, was your reaction to seeing Dad for at last? Well, I remember my dad pretty good. So I, he, I saw him on the truck. Uh -huh. <laughs> they came in trucks, and they were, you know, they had all all the families. That well, what, how'd you feel? There. I felt pretty good. You remember right. <laughs> How about your brother and sister? They what? did too. They good. Did too. Well, of course, my sister didn't know my dad because he was only a baby. You know? Just yeah, small. Mm -hmm. And your mom, of course, she uh, she was yeah. tickled pink. She was uh, very happy that he was alive because we didn't know one day from the next who was alive and who was dead. Yeah. Did you have any news about whether he was dead or alive before you saw him on the truck? Yes. 
How did you find out that he was still they, living? They, they had some, uh, you know, uh, uh, how you call that, uh, some com way of communication without the Japs being known about what that communication was. Okay. Like little pieces of paper or that, that they were able to get through the game. All right. Did, uh, from the concentration camp, did any of the uh, people in there try to escape and get caught by the Japanese? No. There was, you couldn't escape. We were very well guarded. Okay. Uh, and not only that, we were in the jungle, and the jungle had a lot of animals that were, you know... Sure. Uh, let's say hungry. <laughs> what did they ha did they have uh, a border around the camp uh, yes. some kind of a wall or wood or uh, wire a wood and wire fence the okay. double a double a walking for the guards and then a double wire fence yes did you have any lighting in, in, in your barracks uh no we don't we had we had lighting like candles and things like that okay so um were you aroused in the morning and then uh, closed down at night at any specific, specific no, times? No, we had to stand tall at, at noon. Everybody had to come out and, and stand and uh, be counted that they were still at the same number of people in the camp. And that was every day at noon? Every day at noon, and you had to, you know, bow to the commandant of the, of the, of the camp. Did you learn any of the names of any of the Japanese that were guarding you? We did, but I don't remember. Any sure. Any did. did you learn any Japanese uh, no, language? No, no, no. At that time, did you only speak Dutch? Correct. Only Dutch. Well, I knew some Indonesian. But okay. Um, did you make any friendships with any other youngsters in the camp? Yes, we did. What, and, uh, what kind of things did you do during the day to uh, occupy we, yourselves? We, we played ball and, and, you know, we kept ourselves busy, busy with whatever we could find. Did the Japanese provide you with any basketballs, footballs, baseballs Heck, or anything? No, 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 no. What? no. How did you fashion balls? We, well, you mean, we, we had, maybe somebody had some balls or okay. something like that. But we, uh, we kept ourselves busy pretty good. Good. And we, I got, I went, be, I became the age where they were able to get, to use me and work in the gardens outside. The, that was outside the outside, prison camp? Outside the camp. What, but, what kind of uh, vegetables or fruit did you grow? Well, they had beans and, uh, and, and you know, uh, uh, some potatoes and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's regular food. So did the civilians get any of the fresh food, or was that just for the guards? No, that, that was for us, too. Okay. For both the guards and, and for us, so. How did the guards treat you? Uh, the, generally not too bad, <clears throat> but if you had an infraction or something like that, they, they beat you up pretty good. Did you have any infractions? No, no. <clears throat> My mother was beat up, but but, but that one what, time. What kind of an infraction did she have, or they claim she had? Because she didn't uh, react to the the demands of the of the guards. So they beat her up. They beat her up uh, with, with gun butts, or with what with? No, they the just fists? just beat her up, put her you know, beat her up with her fists and stuff like that. Yeah. Did she? And Did she, you have any kind of medical facility in that camp? We had a we had a little in the center of the camp is what we had a a, a a kind of a dispensary. Okay. And uh, Did she have to go to the dispensary when she got beat up? No, 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 no. No, they just held her and and then let her go later on and let her go back. Oh. All right. So let's uh, let's go back to. The, the English consolidate you, you see your dad, and uh, when you got out of the camp, where did you go? We went back to Padang and... Uh, How did you get there? We up on trucks. They had trucks available for us and trucked us back in. Military trucks? Military trucks, correct. Uh, were those 
Were those driven by English or Americans? They, they were English mostly, but uh, there were some not Americans. There were some of the Dutch. The Dutch uh, army okay. uh, came in and and helped out. You know. How long did it take to get from the camp over to Bedang? About five hours. Okay, so it wasn't an overnight trip. No, no. When you got back to Bedang, where did you go? We uh, we were put in in in, in uh, housing that was empty housing because of the war, and they had uh, they put us in, in a house with other families. Okay. So we 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 we, we kind of lived the two or three families in a house. Did you ever get back to your villa? No. Well, I uh, we we went to see it, but that's <laughs> about it. But you never got to live in it again. No. Um. Well, at that time, you know, the, the, uh, the, there was a, a change in Indonesia between the Dutch and the Indonesians, and an uprising that, the, you know, the Dutch should have give over the uh, uh, responsibilities that they... To the Indonesians? To, to the Indonesians, and they were after the Dutch to... Uh, to basically kill as many as they could get, and so. Oh, really? Yeah. So we were in, in another problem, and because of that, we had barbed wire around all of our houses oh, for a while. <laughs> well, when uh, when you got out of the camp, uh, did the did the military give you any uh, delousing or uh, anything to keep you from spreading any diseases? Uh, that's a good question. There was some of that, yes. Lice was one of the, one of the bigger things. Okay. Did, but, did, were but, you bothered by that? No. I didn't have any. My sister didn't have any because she they, they, she did lost they all her. her head? She, she, she shaved, they shaved their heads, yes. <laughs> How about your mom? Did they shave her head? Not that I recall. No. Okay. They wouldn't do that in the mother. <laughs> <laughs> she had enough. <laughs> she was a tough one, old one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was th that was very scary because uh, you know you didn't want to come out of your house. Sure. And they came with trucks and stuff like uh, uh, kind of tried to uh, scare everybody. Sure. Just intimidation, so you'd obey what they said. Absolutely. Well, you didn't go out. There's nothing to what they say. Um, but those were those were Indonesians, you know the. Uh, those that, that the ones the Dutch out and so right. You know. So when you were in this house with other families, how many and you're surrounded by barbed wire? Uh, how many families were in one house? Uh, three families with their kids. You know. uh, what? How long were you in there? I was there about three months, and. Uh, then I left. I, I I never had any schooling, so uh, my folks sent me uh, back to the Netherlands. Now, how did they do that? Uh, did you have to get special permission, or no? No. How no. did you get from Padang to the Netherlands? We had uh, ships that were going back and forth to the Netherlands and Indonesia. Did you have family back in the Netherlands that you went to? Yeah, I went back to my, to my uncle, who lived in uh, in Amsterdam at that time. Okay. And I went to school. I never went to school. <laughs> now, how how old were you when you first I, had any education? I was ten. 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 How how did you handle getting to school? Not very well. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> we were did, very frustrated, you know. And how about the language? Were you okay with the language? In yeah, school? I used to speak Dutch. Well, it was a Dutch school. But you hadn't had any education up to that point. Did you still do okay? Yes, I did okay. We how? did quick, quickly, you know. Every six months we went up a grade. And okay. Try to catch up. <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, is that like what we would call elementary school today? Yes, that's correct. And how many years did you attend that school? Uh, let's see, no, it's right. uh, about three years. And what grade were you in when you graduated from that school or left uh, that school? I was uh, in 
uh, commensurate with the American system, the sixth grade. Sixth grade? Mm -hmm. Where where did you go after you graduated from the sixth grade? We went up to uh, we we have called uh, we have another uh, school that's called the Mulo, which is kind of an in between. Uh, in I'm trying to say um, it's kind of a middle school. A middle school between that and and college, you know. Now, when you say college, are you talking about college as we know it, or college yes. like a high school? No, college as as we know it. Uh, uh, okay, where where did you go to college? Well, not. Uh, I'm assuming uh, that you went to college. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I I went to Mulo in in the Netherlands, and lived with my uncle, and I lived uh, in in other places before uh, I em emigrated to the United States in 1951. So, who did you live with besides your uncle? I lived uh, with the boarding schools. Boarding schools? Mm hmm What was your uncle's name? His Hugo, H-U-G-O. And the last name, was it Weening? Weening, Weening yeah. And what did your uncle do uh, at home? He was, uh, he was in financing investments and things like that. Uh, and this is in uh, Amsterdam we had or Rotterdam? Mo we had moved from Amsterdam to Harlem. Harlem is another city in the Netherlands. Was, was because that my, my uncle ha had to move because of his his his, uh, bu his business. How about uh, how about the war? Had uh, your uncle suffered any damage from the war? My uncle was in the underground in the Dutch in the uh, German war. The Germans. Did did he talk to you about that? We did, but not very much. Uh, Do you remember him? Anything that he talked to you about his his activities uh, as an underground warrior? Yeah, he he, uh, he used to help people that were were underground and get their food and things like that. All right, and make sure make sure that they were okay. And uh, there was a whole system of underground. He wasn't the only one. Oh, well, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, but he didn't work because there was the, 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 the Germans had total control over everything over there. Sure. And how about, had the, had the city been bombed or shelled uh, during the war, or was that pretty uh, okay? Uh, the city was bombed in various locations, but not where we were, you know. Okay. And all over the Netherlands, obviously. Sure. They bombed a few things. And then when, <clears throat> when the Americans or the, 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 the people came in to to do, do uh, finish the war, there were bombs all over the place. So, right, so sure, that too. So, but I wasn't there when that all happened. I was all over with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I was just wondering about your relatives, uh, how they fared with all the bombing and shelling that went on today. Well, did, did you lose any of them in, in the my, war in Europe? My uh, my grandparents were. Since they were Jewish, you know. All right. And uh, unfortunately, they were picked up and uh, transported to Auschwitz and killed. Okay. So they were they victims of Auschwitz. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you learn that they had uh, gone to Auschwitz? Well, my my mother and my mother was told by told my, by my dad that, that that happened. So. Uh, now I know you've been back to the place where you used to live. Did you ever go to Auschwitz? Yes, I did. I wanted to see the place where they went, and uh, just out of respect, to, you know, that, that I cared about it. Sure, sure. So you came to the States in '51. That is correct. 1951 on the New Amsterdam. <laughs> a big, uh, big, uh, big ocean ship. liner. Oh, oh yeah, that was the biggest ocean liner, the Dutch Holland American Line. So, and did you come over just with uh, civilians, or were there any military on board? Well, there may have been, but but you didn't mostly military, mostly uh, civilians. So now, by that time, you're about 16 years old. Correct. 
Um, had you finished school in uh, in Holland? No, I, I was still going to school. Okay. But, you know, my, my folks immigrated, but immigrated, so I had to go along, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what precipitated uh, your, your mom and dad uh, to immigrate to the U.S.? Well, my father was transferred to New York. By the company? By the company he worked for. So. Still the same company? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you went to New York, you talk about New York City? New York City, correct. Did you no. have any relatives in New York City? N not that I know, no. Not that I know of, no. Um, when you c came to uh, the States, did you have to go through Ellis Island? Yes, we did. Can you tell me that experience? Well, it was pretty simple. We got off the, off the ship, and they processed it through, and, you know, I was picked up by my dad because he was there already. When and when you were processed through, did you have to go through any medical tests? Not that I recall, no. Uh, when, when you came there, were you with your mother? Correct, yes. Did she have to go through any medical tests that you remember? Not that I recall, no. Um, did uh, anybody try to change your name going through uh, Ellis Island? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't need <laughs> oh. so, so your dad picked you up on Ellis Island, and where did he take you? Where was he we, living? We we were we went to Roselle Park, New Jersey. Roselle Park is a, a, a small town in New Jersey near Newark, and. Uh, my dad had a home there. Okay. And uh, we, we. What, what kind of a home did he have? Was it one uh, story, two story? A one story home. How well, long? two story, sorry. Two, a two story home. How long had he been there before uh, you couple, came over? A couple of months. Okay. Um, did you. When, when, what time of year are we talking about in 51? Uh, that was in July. So yeah. schools weren't in. Uh, in session back in in July. So did you start school that no, fall? No, no, I, I I didn't start school until the next uh, next session. I didn't speak any English, so I didn't know where to go. Sure. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm kind of brushed up on the English language as much as we could, and uh, I went to high school. Uh, the next session, uh, I'm gonna be a junior in high school. You were a junior. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Junior didn't know what Junior was, did he? <laughs> junior, <laughs> junior wasn't the same educated as heck, the other juniors, heck right? No. I, How about the other I, I, I was a frustrated 16-year-old, I'm telling you. The bad news. <laughs> well, tell me about how the other students treated you when uh, you came there and you couldn't very, speak English. Very well. Very well. Everybody would try to help me out. No problem. All the kids down the streets, and you know, they all came down, and it was all a big family. Good, good. I mean, no, there was no problem on that. Otto had a problem because he didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what did they try to do tricks on you or anything because you couldn't? No, no, speak? no, 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 no. How did the teachers uh, treat you? Very well, very well. They were very good to me. Well, did and did you do extra work so that you could catch up on English? I did, I did, but I had a French teacher, and uh, I knew French, so they, she translated for me, and that's so what I got a little bit more into the English language that way. Well, how did you learn French? We uh, were taught that in school. Oh, in, in the Netherlands. Yep. Okay. You always had to, you had to uh, learn a language. In, in school, either French, English, or whatever, you know. You had to have a second German, language. German. Uh, I spoke spoke German, so that was that was helpful. So, how many languages did you speak? You speak spoke Dutch. I spoke German, Dutch, French, German, and some French and and some Indonesian because uh, I grew up over there sure. for some time. Uh, how long did you retain those uh, the ability to speak those languages? Uh, pretty much, still yeah. today. Yeah. I can still, still today. Yeah, still. you can talk to people in French and German. Uh, French. No, I'm not saying that I'm proficient, but I can make. I can, can make, do. make do. Yeah. Neat, neat. So you went to high school and you graduated high school. 
But let me ask you, did you work at all outside home uh, during schooling in the States? Yes, yes. What I, did you do? I, I worked for, what is the name of that, that, that uh, the A&P. A&P? A&P. Grocery, Grocery store. Grocery store. Atlantic yeah. and Pacific. Yes. Yeah. What I did worked. you do for them? I was a produce assist, assistant produce manager, <laughs> 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 and the guy I worked for was a German, so we got along real well. <laughs> was he from Germany, or he was an American German? No, he was. I mean, he was. He was real German because he, he was much older than I was. I mean, did, he was. Did he ever tell you any war experiences? No, we didn't talk about the war too much. No. He was very, uh, you know, by the numbers. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. And how did he treat you? Very good, very well. Good. Very, very well. Well, how long did you work for them as a well, I was part, I, I was part time now. I yeah. was not full time. Part time. Oh, but that was about two, two years, two maybe two and a half years. So. Uh, yeah, about two and a half years. Okay. Oh, uh, what did you do when you finished high school? When I finished high school, I went to a school in New York to uh, brush up on some of my deficiencies. Now, uh, you I, say New York. You're talking about New York City? New York City. Remember what school that was? No, I don't remember the name. Remember of the it. school in New Jersey you went to? Yes. What was Ro that? Roosevelt Park High School. Roosevelt Park? Park, Roselle Park High School. Roselle Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you go, you go to New York. Uh, did you go to a university there or a community college or what did you do in New York? No, I just went to uh, a, a school that would help me out to uh, get better, more proficient in, in certain areas for me to prepare me to go to, to, go to college. To go to college? Because right. my, you know, I started as a junior in high school, graduated as a as a senior, but just by the nick of whatever <laughs> it was, and I, and just I by was, the grace I was of not, God, huh? yeah, I was not pro, not proficient enough to go to high school. I mean, I had a lot of deficiencies to go to college. Right. So I went to to New, to New York to brush up on those things that I needed to go to college. Uh, how long did you do that? That was about a year. And then, yeah. So when you finished that, did you get any kind of a certificate or a diploma or anything for I got your a proficiency? I got a certificate, yeah. Okay. And did you, did you work for A&P while you were doing that? No. No, because I had to travel to New York City. It was not next door. You had to go, you had to go on the train. You, you <laughs> took the train to New York City? So the train to New York City. I went to school and then the train back home. How long was the ride by train from home to uh, the school? That's about 30 minutes on the train. You know, you go pretty fast. Over there. What did it cost you? That I don't know. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably was very little in those days. It was that, that expensive. Sure, five or ten cents? Uh, maybe. <laughs> How about your mother? Did she work outside the home when she came to the States? No. Mm, my she mother did just not. Just took care of you kids? Correct, exactly. Um, did your brother and sister go to the same high school? Yes, they did. When you finished this one year uh, brushing up on your English, uh, did you go to college? Yes, I did. Where did you go? I went to Stevens, uh, Stevens Institute of Technology. Where was Hoboken, that? Hoboken, New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> Why did you choose that school? Because uh, I wanted, wanted to go into engineering into engineering, and that's a very big, a good engineering school. So I went there for about a year, and uh, then I transferred to uh, Clarkson College of Technology in Potsdam, New York. Potsdam College or? Pots it was Clarkson. Clarkson? Clarkson. C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N? Yes, Clarkson College of, <laughs> Clarkson Institute of Technology in Potsdam, New York. Potsdam, okay. That's a little town all the way upstate New York. And uh, how many years did you go to? Uh, I, I went Clarkson? there for four four years. 
to uh, college. Yeah. What degree did you get from Clarkson? A Bachelor of Science degree. Uh, did you specialize in any branch of engineering? Uh, no, I was just general type engineering. Okay. Now, did you go? Did you work at all while you were going to Clarkson? Yes, we had some part-time jobs. What kind of work did you do then? Uh, we did painting and all that, you know, in between okay. to make some extra money. Sure. Uh, did you pay your own way through uh, through no. college, or did Dad help you? No, my dad helped me. Uh, my, my dad and my mother both. So, what did uh, you what did you do uh, when you got out of uh, college and you had your engineering degree? Well, I was uh, enrolled in ROTC, and uh, you know, uh, was able to go into the service. Were you a second lieutenant because you had ROTC? I was a second lieutenant, yeah. right, Ken? I mean, <laughs> the gold bar, huh? You you became a citizen somewhere in there. Yeah, in 1959, I became a citizen. Became a citizen? Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't a citizen. Well, sure. Hmm. You had to go through all the teaching and the courses and absolutely pass the test did, and did that. Did that in between everything else? Yeah. <laughs> um, how'd you feel? Like, how did you feel when you became a U.S. citizen? No, normal. Not 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 too bad. Do you have? Do you uh, still have dual citizenship? No. I don't know if we were able to do that in those days. Okay. It came afterwards, but uh, my sister and my uh, my sister, who lived over in the Netherlands, did get dual citizenship. Okay. Because she was younger and came up. So. Sure. So. <clears throat> so you became a citizen in '59. Now, is that before or after you entered the military? Before. I, I had to be a citizen to be in the military. Okay. I couldn't, they wouldn't sign up. <laughs> well, whoever's listening to this uh, 50 years down the road is going to need to know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh -huh. So you're in ROTC and you, you, you graduate, and then uh, did you immediately go into the Army? Yes, I did. Where, where, did, where did you sign up? I signed up uh, in, at the college. I was sworn in over in Clarkson. At, at the college? In Clarkson Co College of Technology. I was sworn in into the service. And where did you go from there? Where was your first duty? I went to Fort Benning, Georgia. And what did you do there? I went to jump school and jump out uh, of airplanes. That's uh, what <laughs> was that uh, your choice or uh, somebody chose that for you? No, that, that was my choice. I wanted to be. I like. I wanted to be in the service, so I did anything that way. But why did you choose uh, jump school? Well, it's, it's a good requirement to have, and that's kind of interesting. You got People, paid more for jumping too, didn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> that's that, that's a good point because uh, <laughs> that was three three hundred dollars a month more. How many times did you have to jump during the month? One one time. One you time. One time to get the three hundred <clears throat> three hundred dollars. Actually, later on, it was th uh, every three months, you get $300 a month. That was a lot of money in those days. Sure. sure. <laughs> uh, I've always wondered why you would want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, but uh, well, there was a monetary uh, every, part to that. It was pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting uh, time. It was, uh, How long were you in jump school at Fort Benning? That was about two months. Two months. where did you go? Uh, <coughs> well, also in Fort Benning, I went to, uh, uh, I'm trying to think now, be a, be a loadmaster to load airplanes. So I got, I, I got qualified to do that because if you're a jump, jump school, when you become and go, go into airplanes, you meant to load the airplane and unload the aircraft and jump after the aircraft to pick up the equipment on the ground and do your combat duty. You understand what I'm saying? So, jump school and load masters kind of, kind of a combined requirement. So when you're talking about loading perfect. the airplane, you're loading the materials 
that the that the fellows are going to use after they jump. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so how long were you down at Fort Benning altogether? Out to Benning, Fort Benning, uh, I would say about six, uh, seven, maybe nine months or something like that. I don't exactly, you know, well, it's, it's the time. Cool. This, this isn't a test, this is just, <laughs> just no, no, no. what but you remember. This is approximate <clears throat> time, you know. Sure. Where'd you go then after you left Benning? After I left Benning, I uh, uh, was got orders to go to Europe. Where'd you go in Europe? I went to Dexheim, Germany. Okay. Dexheim, Germany is a little town. How do you uh, spell that? D E X. Uh, wait a minute. H E I M Dex Heim. All right. Before you went to Germany, did you get leave to go home? Yes, I had about a couple, about a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, by that time, were you married? Yes, I was. I was. I, I I got married in the meantime. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. What's your wife's name? And that was my first wife. <laughs> that's that's okay. What's what's your <laughs> wife's name? It was Kay Peterson. Kay Peterson, and how did you meet Kay? I met her while I was going to school in Potsdam, New York. All right. And uh, did you and Kay have any children? Yes, we did. We had four children. And what are their names? Okay, it's Erica, Scott, Chris, and Adrienne. Are they all still living? They're all living, correct. Uh, are they in the States? They are in the States. Do you see them or talk with them? No, no we, we do talk, but they don't live very close by, you know. <clears throat> my daughter and my, one of my sons lives in Hawaii, and, and I have a son in, uh, what's the name of the town? Raleigh. Raleigh, North Raleigh, Carolina. North Carolina. North, North Carolina. And Erica is over here in Cincinnati. All right. So uh, you you have two weeks leave and then uh, you have to go over to Germany. And uh, how did you get to Germany, by boat or by plane? By boat. <laughs> how long how long was that? About eight nine days. Was that a troop transport or was that commercial? Troop troop transport. Real real <laughs> interesting where, where, thing. Where did you land over in Europe? In Bremerhaven. That's up in northern Germany. Correct. Yeah. Um, what 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 time are we talking about? Uh, you're going to Bremerhaven. Bremer Bremerhaven was in, in 1960. Uh, Bremerhaven was uh, attacked pretty much during the Second World War. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Was there any uh, remnants of war when you landed over there? Didn't see any because we were we were busy t trying to get to our our base. Okay. Our, because we came, we went from the ship straight. They were put us on train transport. Took train. Train uh, to to uh, Wiesbaden, Germany, and then from there to Dexheim. Okay. Now, where was Dexheim? Dexheim was a town on along the Rhine River, uh, near Wiesbaden, right. Germany. Is that central, south, east, west? Uh, it's. It's central, really, pretty much central. All right. What did you do there? I uh, joined the 12th Engineer Battalion. What did you do? I was a company commander. I became a company commander. Uh, airborne, airborne company commander was my main. I had little jobs in in between. Motor pool officer. <laughs> <laughs> And, well, well, tell us about some of the things you did there. Uh, well, we, being a company commander, uh, that takes a lot of, you know, take care of all your men. Sure. And, and work with all their problems and you name it. How, how many men sure. were under you? Uh, in, the, in the company, about uh, 75, 80 people in, in, during that time. Is this an airborne company? Absolutely, we were airborne. And what what did the fellows do uh, on the average week? We trained, we trained, and uh, you know, have uh, outside exercises and things like that. 
That, that's primarily what our, our, our objectives, what objectives were. And uh, we supported one of the battle groups All right. uh, <laughs> of the 8th Infantry Division. And this, this is during the Cold War with Russia, right? Yes. And one of our companies, matter of fact, of our battalion, uh, did go to Berlin to work over there and do whatever they needed to do. I, I was not involved in that. Okay. But uh, be because the Cold War was going on, the, your, your duties were pretty important over there in Germany, Absolutely. weren't they? Absolutely. We had, we had exercises, you know, we had we did the exercises to defend the perimeter of, of Germany with the neighboring country. So. You, had to, you had to be ready at a moment's notice, didn't you? Absolutely, yes. And uh, the fellows drill every day? Uh, most of the day. But, uh, you know, there are other, other, th other duties that you normally have in, in you know, take care of your, 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 your equipment and make sure that you're ready. And Did they have to go to classes? And uh, we have new troops coming in and get them acclimated to to uh, to to the mission requirements and and so forth. So, did you did they have schooling on how to identify various uh, Russian uh, pieces of equipment? Yeah, yeah, we did. And did uh, the fellows continue to jump periodically? Absolutely, yes. We jump once a month for sure. Did Did you jump uh, too? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What well, kind of, what kind of company commander? I got to jump. <laughs> <laughs> I better. I better. You know, I can't leave my troops behind. <laughs> yeah. What kind, what kind of plane were you jumping out of? I was a, uh, an L one nineteen, a, a plane that had the sides to it. You know, like angled uh, exits, and. Uh, that's it. I was mean, it a prop plane or a jet plane? I don't know. In those days, a prop plane. A prop I mean, plane yeah. We don't have any. The, well, the, I, jets, the jets were just coming in. And we were <laughs> well, I, I totally lost interest in airplanes when they went to jets. I, yeah, yeah. I, I love prop planes. Yeah, I know. Uh, a, I've ridden in some of those. Uh, yeah, they were L-119. So, so uh, how long were you company commander over there in Germany? Uh, I was there. I was company commander for about two years. Was your wife with you? Yes, we lived on the base. We had base base accommodations. All right. And do you have kids over there? Yes, all all my kids. Oh, Was sorry, in Germany. Sorry, two of my kids are born in Germany. What kind of base housing did you have? Was it apartment or a little a apartment? Very nice. That How was, was the food? Very good. You cook your own. I mean, sure. <laughs> but but you had plenty of food available to you. Absolutely. Did it have a PX on the base? Not on the base. No, we had uh, our PX was in Bad Kreuzna, and so we drove to the Bad Kreuzna to go to the PX. That How was far the, was that? That was about about forty five minutes. Uh, did you have a, a a military car assigned to you? No. Uh, no, I had my own car. I had to get my own car. You had to buy a car? Yes. What kind of car did you buy over there? I bought a Simca. Uh, that was a French car. <laughs> all right. I didn't speak French, but that was, that was a French car. Um, yeah, but I was able to do that with jumping out of airplanes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to buy a car. You couldn't afford a car without jumping? Mm -mm, not me. I was pretty... Pretty thin pay, you know. What um, did you do uh, in your hours when you weren't on duty? Did you do any, you and the family, do any traveling around Germany? Yes, we did. And what kind of places did you travel to? Well, mostly local, okay. local places, you know, like Wiesbaden and some of the other places that we never, never nearby because we, we, uh, we didn't know much about the German area, so we focused on all that all uh, most of the time. Okay. Take the kids to the zoo in Wiesbaden. I mean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They enjoy the zoo. Absolutely, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Good. Do you stay in the same uh, same base when you're over there in uh, Germany? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was your next duty? My next duty was to go to uh, to. Uh, 
graduate graduate school. Where? Yeah, I went to Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Lehigh? Yes. So you bring the family back to the States? Absolutely. And uh, what was the idea of going to graduate school at Lehigh? Why did you do that? Well, just to get another, my master's degree. Yeah. In engineering? Uh, it was in engineering, yes. Mm -hmm. Any particular branch of engineering you got a master's in? Uh, it was ge still general engineering. Uh, How long did it take you to get your master's? One, one year. Did you work any place while you were studying for your master's? No. Uh, I, I don't know for my hands. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> that was very, very different. And you're still in the military at that time. Absolutely. Uh, but you were making enough in a, well, let me withdraw that. Uh, was the government paying for your master's yes. training? Yes. Okay. And you got master's degree after a year. And then what was your next duty? Well, we, uh, I was, I got orders to go to, uh, I have to think about that now. Oh, I had orders to go to Korea, to Korea. Okay. So I took my family back to Potsdam because my wife came from there, so he, she could be with her family. All right. And so uh, you I, left her at Potsdam, and you go to Korea. How did you get to Korea? By by, by air, air <laughs> an airplane. Oh, uh, was that a straight flight, or did you have to stop in Hawaii or Guam, or? No, I had to stop uh, stop in in San Francisco, and we went from San Francisco straight straight to, to Korea to Seoul, Korea, right. I was going to ask you where you landed, and you already answered that. You landed yeah. in Seoul. Uh, so, what, where were you, where were you stationed in Korea? Uh, Tongari, in Tongari, Korea. It's a little town <coughs> between Seoul and uh, the northern part of the in, by the uh, to the North Korean border, sort of in between um, those two. Near the uh, DMZ. The DMZ, correct. What, what, had, what was your duty over in Korea? Uh, I became the S-4 over there for my, for my battalion. You became the what? S-4. Uh, what's that mean? Supply officer for, for the battalion. What, uh, tell, tell us what you did as a supply officer. Well, I mean, sure that all the, that the, that the but plenty of uh, uh, items available to serve the troops, you know, for the battalion. Yeah. Clothing. Uh, you name it, ammunition, guns, I mean... <laughs> Food and the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards is totally, yeah. There was, you know, ev everything that a soldier would need, uh, you know, or to, to replace so many items that were worn out and, you know, just general. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of accommodations did you have on base? We had uh, pretty good barracks. They had, you know, we had our, I had my own room, and uh, so did all my colleagues. And they were kind of a, a Quonset hut type thing, you know, the round sure. half moon. And that's divided into different rooms? Absolutely, divisions, and we had, you know, good bathroom facilities, and it was very well organized. Well, I was going to ask you about the sanitary facilities. Very did, good. did everybody have to share the shower room, or did you have the shower room was was was, was uh, combined, you know, but but uh, for the rest, it was all individually organized. And, <laughs> okay. And we, we as officers, we had our own place, but the troops were all living in barrack sure. conditions. Yeah. So, what what time of year did you get to Korea? Okay, I'll be going to have to think about it. It was, uh, I believe, uh, somewhere around August of, of, of the year. All right. How was the weather when you got there? Uh, it was pretty good. How about during the winter? Did you, were you there during the winter? Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> how, how, how was the winter? Uh, the winter was pretty hard over there. Uh, How about your accommodations in the Quonset hut? Did you have uh, that, that was good fine. eating? Uh, yes, we did. We how, did how did they heat your hut? Some was with stoves and uh, individual stoves. Uh, mostly, that's what it was. It, it okay. Was not not electrically heated. It just, you know, 
And how about how about uh, eating? Did you have to eat with the soldiers in a mess hall or? Yes, we did. Okay, was food good? Absolutely. Plenty of it. You can plenty. <laughs> Over you eat anything you want. Yeah. So, uh, how about the North Koreans? Did you have any uh, threats from North Korea while you were there? Uh, no, we had a company over across the DMZ. That was a company. They they were right in the on the DMZ line. And did, uh, did and you have communications with them on a daily basis? Uh, yes, we did. And uh, you wh know, what did they do at, on the DMZ line? They they uh, protected the protected the DMZ. I mean, the general. Make Make sure the North Koreans but weren't coming that, across. That, that nobody was coming across, right? Any threats while you were there? There were plenty of threats, but <laughs> nothing materialized. No, okay. None of them. Uh, so, were there any threats that caused you to have to mobilize? No, not that I know. No, but we had exercises, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, just to keep ready. Yes. We uh, bridge, we bridged the Imjin River a lot. You bridged the Imjin River. Okay. That's a river. When you say you bridged that, you built the bridge across. We we built and you know we had uh, bridges bridge parts on trucks, and we put them together so that we could get across the Imjin River just in case. We had to have alternate ways to get to the other side of the river. All right. And were these permanent structures, or were these no. just sections that could be assembled quickly? They assembled quickly. We had to put them, put them across the river, and tear them down and put them back on the truck. Simple so, as that. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, and go home. <laughs> wow! wow. But those were good exercises. Uh, yeah. I was, by that time, I was a, a company commander, I was commander of B Company. What was your rank? I was a was a captain. Captain? Mm-hmm. Right. When did you first become a captain? While, while, I, while I was in Lehigh University. Okay, good. <laughs> by mail. <laughs> <laughs> by mail. <laughs> say, good. good. <laughs> so how long were you in Korea? <coughs> One year. Thirteen months, to be exact. The same base all the time. Yeah, we didn't move around too much. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> so when you came yeah. back from Korea, how, first of all, how did you get back? How do I get back by airplane? And where did you come to? I went to. Uh, I mean, let me think now. Um, I, have to, I have to get back here. I went to I went I, I went to Potsdam, New York, to be with my family. That was the first thing. All right. Where Where did you land though when you came back? Did you land in New York City. I, did, uh, I landed in uh, in no in, in Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. Okay. No, no, Newark, New Jersey. And from there, I took a plane up to to, to Potsdam, New York, because I hadn't seen my family for a year. Eh? Uh, so how how the kids react to dad coming home? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I did. How about your wife? She happy to see you? Yeah, at she, least at that time. Yeah, she <laughs> <laughs> a little, little, little rough, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, why, and why, one of my sons was born over there. <clears throat> while while you were uh, in Korea. Did you have any communications uh, with home? Did oh, letters? Yeah. Or? Absolutely. Mail okay. was good. Okay. And you know, I could go by telephone. And, uh, no, that was no problem there. Good. So you're you're back at Potsdam. How long were you in Potsdam before you had your next assignment? Uh, I, I was on leave at the time. You know. For how long? About thirty days. Thirty days. And where did you have to report? Uh, then I went, to, I was assigned, I have to think now, it was really get confusing. I was assigned to, uh, um, to the 25th Infantry Division in, uh, Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. 
So I moved my family from there to Hawaii. What island were you on? I was on Oahu, Schofield Barracks in Oahu. So uh, in, in Hawaii, uh, what, what were your duties in Hawaii? I was, in, uh, I was in S S2 for the, uh, God, I forget, uh, the 65th Engineer Battalion, wasn't it right? 65th or? Yeah, I, I think so. You can use your cheat sheet. I, yeah, he has a lot of memory here. Yeah. You use our phone? Not, not yet, I was. I, mean, I was. Uh, Were you a Hawaii Troop Movement Officer G3? Yeah, that that was my side job. Uh, I was the uh, S2 Company Commander. Yeah, no, S2 Staff Officer. It was a staff officer in the job. Uh, uh, Yeah, the 65th Engineer Battalion, that was right. <laughs> S S 65th My Engineer Battalion. That's correct. Yeah. And that was in the time that the Vietnam War was pretty much brewing all over the place. So I became a troop uh, to a movement officer and they assigned me to uh, San Francisco to move all the dependents that coming from the 25th Infantry Division that needed to go home because the Battalion was uh, identified to to go to Vietnam, Vietnam. and move, over, move do that do that job. So I spent about two months in, in in San Francisco moving troops from that landed in San Francisco and get dependents, moving them into other aircraft with other people and 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 help them out with anything they needed. And, so after two months in San Francisco, where did you go? I went back to I went back to uh, Hawaii. I mean, <laughs> back <laughs> back to home base. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the Vietnam War was brewing. Did you get involved in the Vietnam War? Uh, <coughs> I was involved already because I because of moving troops around. M moving troops around for one thing, but when I came back. Uh, the since I just came back from Korea, I didn't have to go to Vietnam, but the battalion moved and rotated into the into Vietnam into the war. So I got an assignment to USARPAC, U.S. Army Pacific, and I worked for the G3 as a movement officer for troop movements from the states anywhere in the Pacific to make sure that. All everything was taken care of uh, in accordance with their orders. Okay. And did did you end up going to Vietnam yourself? Eventually, yes. Okay. Eventually, I got orders myself. But I'd been there already. I don't know how many times because my job, I had to go check, and make inspections of troops that went in one place and the other place. So I traveled. Okay. So well, we uh, haven't talked uh, about that. When when were you doing that? What period of time? We were going uh, back and forth to Vietnam, checking out. That was uh, uh, that was about in the in the, oh god, I have to go check that. Use our pack. <laughs> this is a good drill. I'm just able to get. Uh, well, let's see, let's see. Well, six we, we, you show here that uh, number six, your Vietnam engineer group G3 staff offer in Long Ben. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. That's that's you, sir, back. And but before you got that assignment, you had been there back and forth a number of times. I've been because of my duty. I sure. went back and forth. To, to Vietnam, to, back to Korea, here and there, and, and you know, G3 
check check make sure that the troops were properly received and and are uh, you know that the mission was accomplished fully the, the equipped weapon, and had everything they needed and have and everything they needed or whatever they didn't I had to advise the G3 that they needed needed buck up over here and whatever whatever it took you know those were inspection tours too many of them but I, well, were, were you keeping the uh, the troops supplied with uh, with um, armament? Uh, no, no, no. That wasn't my job. Okay, y your job was seeing that they had a strictly that they were uh, they were there that they were day support that they and they got the support. That's it. So, were you permanently assigned to, to Vietnam at all? Yes, unfortunately, yeah. uh, I got orders to Vietnam eventually to have been stationed in Vietnam. Yeah, was that Long Bin? That was Long Bin. Um, I've got a uh, map here. Yeah, that, that that was a big base there. Let me, let me get my map. Tonsonet, wasn't it? Huh? Tonsonet? <coughs> no. Tonsonet was another one. Uh, uh, Vietnam veteran gave me this map, and I had oh. it. And <laughs> you, I had it. You, you, you're in. I had it mounted. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, first of all, Mary, can you see this, or can you? Terrific glare. Can you? Yeah, if you turn it, that's a little mm -hmm. better. Oh God, I haven't seen that for a long time. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it should. Yeah, it should be. Where's Saigon? I was very close to Saigon. Uh, is Tain in? Uchi, no, that's Kuchi. Uh, <coughs> well, maybe it's, maybe it's not on there, but it was it, a, it, it was a big base, but it was down in this area. It it was. It, 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 it's not far from Saigon, eh? Okay. Because we used to take a helicopter from Saigon and go right on in. Did about about a 45, 40 minute uh, helicopter ride, you know. So when you were when you were first assigned to Vietnam, is that where you went into? You went into Saigon, or did you go into another base? I went into Saigon, and I was picked up over there, and we, we flew right into Long Bin. And did you stay in Long Bin all the time you were there? Uh, yes, I was. I was assigned over there in Long Bin. Okay. So, uh, were were you in the midst of any combat activity? I uh, been uh, uh, not really because my I was working for the G three, and you know we we pretty much stayed in in base area. So, so the the base was big enough and well enough protected that uh, oh, yeah. uh, you weren't attacked. No, it, uh, it, it, weren't, it was pretty good shape. Uh, weren't weren't shelled by uh, no. mortars or anything. No, 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 no. Uh, did you have a, a base hospital there? We had a base at dispensary, but the hospital, no. Okay. It was a big one. There was a big uh, hospital at Kuchi. Uh, I interviewed a combat nurse that was at Kuchi. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, that could, that could be, but, but, but we didn't, uh, at least I don't know if there was any because I, <laughs> I what, what were your accommodations like in Vietnam? Long been, very good. I had my own, my own place, you know. Uh, Food adequate. It, it's a, ba a, in a, in a it was kind of a barracks, and they were all divided into different uh, accommodations, and they had their own. Uh, Food was uh, good. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it was very good. Let's put it that way. I never expected to be in combat and be living like that. Man. <laughs> uh, well, who was that's your boss? Who did you report to? Oh, now that is a that's a. Good uh, I reported to 
the son of General Patton. Really? Yeah. I uh, I remember I had to report for duty, and I said, you know, we did it usually the, the right way. It'd say, you know, Sir Otto Weening reporting for duty. And, and, and the guy, and he said, well, what the hell are you doing here? I said, I'm reporting for duty, sir. Well, how come you're not outside there fighting with the troops? <laughs> well, I didn't know then, but then I figured find out that that was the son, General Patton's son uh, <laughs> who, who, who fought <laughs> uh, in the cavalry, who had the cavalry division under his command and worked very hard in World War II, you know. Sure. So that was, was okay, I said, you know. And uh, he says, well, you better, you, you, you better better go to work. He says, that, that's what I'm here for, sir. I mean, all this, sir. And, uh, well, did you have any much interaction with him? Did you have to report to him on a periodic basis? Absolutely. I mean, he, he was the boss. He was my boss. Sure. Yeah. But how often did you have to meet with him? Well, you know. Once a week or daily say, or once a month? or uh, Once a week or as needed, you know, because... Uh, uh, being in a, being in a government like that, they, they like meetings, you know. You gotta, you gotta have a meeting. Oh, we uh, have a meeting about this, meeting about that. So, sporadically, we had meetings, and uh, you know, I had to be on the ball, make sure, sure that I uh, get the right information and all that. But we were more, more or less an information type uh, outfit to keep everybody informed as to what was going on. What what were your your normal hours of uh, of duty each day? Eight to five. You could never believe eight to five. <laughs> what, what were you able to What were you able to do on your your free time? Free time, they had uh, places where you could swim. They had uh, you know uh, pool pool like pool places. Good. I did a lot of uh, exercises to stay fit. You know. Do you have any USO pro programs come through your, your yes, base? Yes, the USO, they, they came through. Do you, do you remember any particular troop that came through? Uh, gosh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, remember right now. I don't know how old Bob Hope would have been, but... Uh, yes, you, he was there. It, did mm -hmm. you see him? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm How many times did you see Mr. Hope? One time. One, oh. you know, one. Another one was only one year, you know, so. Sure. Yeah, Bob Hope, and then they, they usually at Christmas time, they, they came through and uh, had a big, nice, nice activity. Uh, he, he always had some good looking woman coming with him. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you remember the, the women that came with him? Raquel no. Welch or anybody like that? Uh, I don't remember, but my my recollection was that they were very good looking. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Uh, Tell me about the weather over there. What uh, what was the weather like? The weather was great. I mean, it's always sunshine. You know, there's no you don't see snow over there. Mostly. Uh, yeah, but how about heat? Heat. Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty nice, <laughs> hot. <laughs> I've had uh, some of the soldiers tell me it was just unbearable heat. It is, but, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, over there. You know. But did, you, did you have special lightweight clothing for, for Vietnam? We did. Uh, yeah, we had uh, who, jungle, jungle fatigues. They, they, they gotta, where, where did you eat? Did you eat in the mess with the rest of the troops? In the mess hall, yeah. And who served the food? Did you have Vietnamese uh, serving you? There, there were maybe some people, some Vietnamese that were hired to be working in the mess hall, and there were troops okay. that were doing the cooking. And, uh, Didn't have any problems with any of the Vietnamese cooks or servers? No, 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 no. Uh, barber shop, uh, did you have we, Vietnamese we had cutting a, hair? We had some Vietnamese cutting hair, yes. Mm -hmm. Some of the fellows have told me that uh, the daytime you might have a barber uh, cutting your hair and trying to kill you at night. No, no, no. Didn't have that experience? No, 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 no. And no. The same thing with food. They would have a chef uh, preparing. These would be guys out 
in the in the fringes, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the cooks might be trying to kill them at night on a raid. You couldn't well, you couldn't tell friend from foe. No, but 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 uh, be honest with you, that we never I've never seen that there. No. Okay. Uh, to try to kill somebody in the camp, I mean, you wouldn't do it because you, you, you won't last but f very, very long. Sure. Uh, I don't think that, no. But uh, the answer is no. So during this period of time, uh, your wife is back at Potsdam. Are you communicating with her, uh, mail or phone? Uh, no, she was living in Hawaii, you know. She, oh, Hawaii, okay, I get myself, uh, I don't make notes, and I get confused. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> I ought to make more notes. Don't be like the Lone Ranger. I'm 87 years old, and I'm going back 50, 40, 40, 50 years to remember to try what happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making it pretty decent. <laughs> you're, you're, doing a, you're doing an excellent job. Yeah? You're doing an excellent job. Yeah. Well, I'm 83, and I'm not using any notes, so sometimes I, I can't keep track of all the, all the places that you've been. So oh, yeah. she's back in Hawaii, and you're yeah. in, you're in yeah. Vietnam, oh. and the family's with her in Hawaii. Yes. And Everybody was living there on the base at Schofield Barracks. They had a special uh, apartment over there. Uh, well, Schofield Barracks had been attacked by the Japanese in World War II, hadn't right. they? Right. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that had been totally rebuilt and was okay. Oh, that was nice, nice place. Did, did you see any evidence of uh, craters or any Not signs I, of war? Not that I remember, no. Um, okay, uh, uh, how did you get your orders that you were going to be getting out of Vietnam? Uh, per, uh, uh, in a letter, or in person, or? I got orders to, to go back. Okay, yeah. to go back to Hawaii? Go to back to Hawaii. And you got so, back there by plane? Yes, of course. <laughs> was that a commercial or was that military? Uh, we had a commercial plane. <clears throat> you remember what airline? Um, Pan Am, I think we were still in, in business in those days with okay. Pan Am. <laughs> <laughs> so the family meet you at the airport when you got back? Yes, yes. And uh, so how long, did, how long did you stay in Hawaii at that time? Uh, I stayed there for after I had I uh, I had orders I had orders to uh, to leave Hawaii and to go I don't remember oh, the engineer school. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. She she did a pretty good she did a pretty good. Because that's where I came in. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, I want to <laughs> so, I mean, so, you so, blew it. <laughs> so, so you got you got orders to go back to school. That's to the engineer school. Where? Fort Belvoir, Virginia. All right. And uh, when, uh, when you were at Fort Belvoir, uh, were you still married? And uh, I was. Yes, I was. Okay. But I wasn't in, in divorce proceedings. And it was you were my wife. okay. We. We we could not uh, mend fences okay. any longer, so that was it. It's all right. Without going into detail, I sure I don't expect you to. I didn't ask you to. So, so, uh, so the family isn't with you at Fort Belvoir. No, no. They're up, they st they're at, they where stayed, are they? Back in the they stayed in, they stayed in Hawaii. They stayed in Hawaii. Right. I left them there because, you know, my kids had school and stuff like that, and so they they were better off. And my wife wanted to stay in Hawaii. Okay. And I said, that, well, that's okay. So you went went back to engineering school. What do you what do you do in an engineering school? You're trying to get a PhD, a doctorate, or what? No. <laughs> I was trying to meet the requirement because there comes a point in time and you don't have your schooling, you can't get promoted. So I had to go to engineering school to refresh. All the, the 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 methods of calculating engineering work and stuff and things like that, and so. Well, this is stuff you didn't have when you were at Lehigh. Uh, some of it, yeah, some of it was, but not totally, you know. All right. They're, they're actually, in, in in military uh, school like that, they're very precise, and 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 I'll be honest with you, I learned a lot to go to that school that I 
didn't quite understand going through my graduate degree. <laughs> Just right. so every, uh, but it was a requirement. So well, how long were you in school at Fort Belvoir? Uh, that was about nine months, supposedly a year, but nine months, somewhere like that. So where did you live? Did you live on base? I lived on base, yes. I had my own quarters on base. And uh, you still a captain? Yes, yes, I still. No, you weren't. You know, you were a major in I mean, Korea. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I became a major when I was in Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. I was a major. Yes, I You're was. A major. Sorry. Okay. I, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, did you become a major uh, because uh, of time and service, or what you had done, or why did they uh, bump you up to from captain? Well, I was due to be promoted. I okay. mean, went through the system and got, I got promoted in Hawaii uh, when I was in, the G, in my G3 okay. uh, position there. So when you're going to Fort Belvoir, going to more school, you're you're a major. Correct. Yes. And nine months there, and then where do you go? Wait a minute, nine months from. <laughs> um, first of all, I met um, I met Alice there. The best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> well well yeah. said. Yeah. yeah well, I and <clears throat> we 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 got acquainted and. Well, one thing to the next thing to the next thing, and I got my divorce, and then we got married. Well, how did you meet her in Fort Belvoir? That's another, oh my God, that's a big story. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't want I, any gory details or anything. No, no. nothing gory. <laughs> nothing, nothing gory, but no, I, was, I was a, uh, I, I was uh, uh, short on money because of my divorce, it cost me a lot of money, so. Uh, I worked part time uh, as an uh, emergency technician in a hospital in Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. At night. So, you know, I was an assistant to the doctors and sure, uh, you know, and, and nurses and what what in the emergency room. And so, obviously, I had to. I took patients from the bottom floor, from the emergency room to the rooms, to the to the to the cardiac units, and you name it. And who was there? That was Alice. Now, and was she, she a nurse? She was the <laughs> yes, she was the nurse uh, of the uh, critical care unit at Alexandria Hospital. And so we met. And, that's how that happened. Oh, That's good. how I met her. Oh, good. Otherwise, I would have never met her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank goodness you had a part-time job. I know. I, 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 Pover you know. Poverty had its uh, advantages, didn't it? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so where did you go after uh, Fort Belvoir? Fort Belvoir. Well, we had a we had a home there in. in uh, uh, close by to the base, you know, so, uh, wait a minute, Alice and I married, I mean, before we were married, we bought a home in, in near Fort Belvoir. Okay. And so that's where we lived, okay. okay. And, our, and uh, after we were married, uh, our son Kevin was born, and well, he was born when I came back. Wait a minute. There's, mm -hmm. there's a you went to Vietnam. Wait a minute. Yeah, I, I had another tour in Vietnam. Another uh, one? From, after, from Fort Belvoir? After, 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 I left, after I was done at Fort Belvoir, I had to tell, tell Alice I have to go to, to, uh, to Vietnam back. Another tour. So I left uh, Fort Belvoir and went back. Uh, and I lived at, in Tonsonut Air Base. Okay. Uh, in Saigon. And I left Alice with... Uh, Kevin Kevin was not born yet, right? No, he wasn't born. No, he wasn't we born. had two of your kids. Two of my kids were living with Alice, so I left them with her. And, okay. And I went back to good old Vietnam and... 
did my mother duty. <laughs> so what, uh, you, you landed at Tansanut and uh, you, you were stationed there? Yes. I so what, what were your duties at Tansanut? I was the, uh, the, off the engineer officer responsible for the proper operation of the uh, uh, communication uh, units, the small communication units on the mountains that uh, did the radio waves and connected. Okay, so uh, that, that was pretty critical for the fellows in combat, wasn't it? Absolutely. So I have, my, my duty was to make sure that their air conditionings were operating and anything that uh, and the electricity and all the engineering systems which were really uh, what also supported by the architects, architects, uh, engineers, civilian. Civilian architecture engineers? Yeah, engineers that were also stationed there. So I wasn't repairing anything, but again, I was making sure that they were done, and if, and if they had problems, I was responsible to get them over there to, to, get, to things, get things, to, to get things and squared away. And, wow. and report to Mac V. That uh, what the what the status was of all these these. Uh, who's who's your boss over there this time? Oh God, my boss. Uh, I was I was working for a, a, a full colonel. Remember his uh, name? Colonel Schneider. Schneider. Uh, Schneider. Yeah. Remember his first name? No, forgot it. Um, what period of time are we talking about? Is this? Uh, before or after a Tet Offensive? Oh, after Tet Offensive. Okay. This, this was in, uh, this is in, in the, the 70s? 70s, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, 72. 72, 72, right, yeah. Early 73. Right. I was, that, was my, that was my last tour over there. But, and uh, Stayed at the same place? Same yeah, base? I stayed at the same place, at my same room. We were uh, at BOQ, in BOQ number one, which is a building right in, uh, in sort of in the town of of, uh, of the air base. Okay. Now, uh, on, on this tour, did did you come close to any combat? Uh, yes, we did. I did. Uh, tell uh, tell me about some of that. I you know, I had to fly to all these different places to. And what, are you, what, are you, and, uh, what are you? What are you flying in? Those li these these little airplanes, that two two job, two proppy props, you know, and uh, they get me to the place, and then I have to go up. Uh, they they took me to the top, and then sometimes I had to go down, find my way down below the mountain, and then what, what? they would pick me up, and I go to the next place, and I did that, and then I go home at the end of the week, I go back. <laughs> To Tanzanut, see. Well, uh, are they always flying you on these uh, prop planes, or are they delivering you sometimes in helicopters? Helicopters too, yes. Absolutely. What what uh, model helicopter were you in? Uh, were you in Hueys or something? He, big? He, yeah, that that name is 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 it? Uh, it was like Hueys. You know? Hueys. Yeah. Uh, did, did you have a, a a squad with you? You're not. You're not getting dropped there and, and walking down a mountain by yourself, are no, you? No, 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 no. No, uh, I, I was by myself, I mean, to go over there. But the people that were working over there lived up there, you know, up in the mountain. But the helicopter drops you off, and you have to go down to to the assigned spot. They have, they have uh, vehicles that they could drive down. Okay. You know, so did not that as I mean, they had to be able to come down. All and right. then I pick up another airplane, but I have an occasion that I, you know we were taking off and we were the, the people down below, but the, the enemy down below is trying to shoot us down, you know that kind of thing. Well, uh, and we, small we, arms fire or machine guns or what? That's that's it. Yes, both, Small, both, and uh, that, happened, that happened that happened on numerous occasions. You know they wanted to. Shoot, shoot the aircraft down. But well, did you uh, come close on any of those occasions yourself? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. We were taken off and we were shot at, and they could, and and the pilot advised us we were being they're fine. Taking fire. So, but make sure your seatbelt is fastened because we we're going to have to go up straight or it could change his 
yeah. his his RPM to get the hell out. So, but that happened on a, on on a quite a few occasions. But so that, you, that's you, it. And and flying over the rice paddies, that's another one. So you, you the enemy lay in lay in the rice yeah. paddies, <laughs> and coming up and fire at you when you're flying over. I mean, that, that's a, those so were all scary things. But so you took a lot of fire on those trips. Yes, we did. Yeah, uh, but did. but but you know, never never got hit per, per se. So good. So and uh, you know, and in Saigon, I had uh, places to go in Saigon to check the facilities that were operating certain buildings for the government in, in Saigon. So that kept me busy. Uh huh. And that, that was done by Jeep. I mean, we. I had my own Jeep, by the way, that I that played. Really? Yeah, I had my own Jeep. <laughs> I was traveling all the time. I said, how do we, you know, we will we'll let you have this Jeep and you can do your job, do these, so. Yeah, that was pretty good. But uh, driving in Saigon, when I was there, wasn't too bad, but, but it wasn't all that safe either, you know. You, you could, then I could knock you off right on the on a, on a Jeep, but. Uh, nothing ever happened to me. No. So did did you get into Saigon frequently? Yes, well, Tan Sanut is right next to Saigon. But you got into town frequently? Uh, absolutely, into town. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, did you have much interaction with the Vietnamese people themselves? With, with the people, of A and, uh, A and, I mean, uh, the architects and engineer group, they were kind of a mix. There's some Vietnamese and uh, Americans and uh, kind of a mixed group, you know. So um, yes, I had, in that, in that respect, yes, we did. I did. Uh, how did uh, how the Vietnamese people treat you as uh, the no problem with military? That. I never had many, none never had problems. I got along with all of them. <laughs> So how long were you over there uh, in Tan Sanut, that, uh, that tour? Well... Over a year? No, that, that, cut, that was cut short because that was in 73. And, uh, you know, everybody knows that the, the war was over sometime in 73. Over, it was a piecemeal between the North and the South. and So uh, I was in contact with... Alice a lot uh, because I had the opportunity to use some of the phone systems. Sure. So uh, I told her that you know, things were going to be closing up. So, and my uh, son uh, Kevin was about to be born. So I talked to my commander and said, you know, I mean, this thing is going to be be closing up. What are my chances of getting home? You know. He says, Otto, I said, I'll get your orders tomorrow. <laughs> and that's how easy it was. I get your orders tomorrow, and you, you, you figure out the flight that you can take and just go go home. Good. So you flew out of Saigon? Yeah, so I did. Uh, com I, I commercial never, again? Yes. I was never so thankful about it. <laughs> Gertel well, Snyder. Out, wasn't it? Yeah. Right yeah. after Baby left, Operation Baby Yeah. Gertel uh, Snyder, he was a nice guy. I mean, uh, so I came home uh, to Where Alice. did you come to? Did you, did you come? Uh, I, but, uh, where did I land? Dallas. Huh? Dallas. Yeah, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Dallas and Washington. Virginia, Dallas. Well, Washington. Uh, and, and from there, obviously, I was picked up and would take me home. And was that the end of your military career? No, I don't right. know. Hey. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But uh, Alice what? mentioned Operation Baby Lift. What was that? I don't know much. Didn't know much about that. The Baby Lift was a lift out of because of the war, closing of the war, of all the people in Vietnam that worked for the government that they've been trying to get them out and okay. you know uh, to to bring them to a safe place. It's like an Afghan type. Yeah. Operation. Yeah. Yeah. So they try to bring bring those people over. So. Uh, so I la I landed at Dallas. Uh, so happy to be home again. Sure. Again. <laughs> and from Dallas, you went where? 
Uh, I went home and my son was born in Alexandria Virginia Hospital where I, where I worked before. So, uh, and make a long story short, I mean, I, I, was, I was working, uh, I was not, I didn't work anywhere, did I? You worked you're back at the engineer school. Yeah. Until you got orders to go. Right, I worked, I worked at the engineer school and then got orders to go to the Netherlands. Uh, so were you happy about that? Oh yeah, I was very happy about that. <laughs> it was I a mean, NATO assignment. I mean, it was a NATO assignment. Well, and, uh, where did you Where did you go in the Netherlands? I went to uh, uh, Brunsum, Brunsum, the Netherlands, which is a town right in the corner of the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany, all the way to the south southern part of Holland. Okay. What did they want you to do there? Uh, I wasn't. I had a big job there. Uh, I was the uh, uh, NATO uh, chief engineer for uh, AFSAN, Allied Forces Central Europe, and my, my responsibilities were to keep up all the facilities under the auspices of that that group, where where we had three bases in, in the Netherlands close by and old mine structures which were converted to, to uh, working areas uh, for the troops and there were uh, seven different nations there, you know, Germans, France, you name it, about seven nations that, that uh, comprised that, that, that group. They were originally stationed in Paris and then uh, the, the, the French closed it up, and that whole uh, organization uh, was stationed there in the, in the Netherlands. Um, I had a base in, in Germany to take care of, and then I had a partial responsibilities for, for the underground bunker in Germany, which is a bunker that's atomic... Uh, Bomb proof, you know what I mean? Deep on the ground, all come, uh, everything was self sufficient. So if the bomb that would threaten, they could close it up and be self sufficient for quite a long time. And, okay. And, uh, and the base, there was a supporting base for that uh, close by uh, during normal times. So people could stay there and, and uh, whatever, for, use it for whatever whatever that's needed. So you got to so, use your engineering skills? Uh, yeah, big time. Good. Uh, big time. Had about a hundred uh, local people working for me. In Civilians? Day. Civilians, yeah. Uh, what nationality were they? Mixed? No, they were, they were all Dutch. Good old Limburg's people. <laughs> <laughs> they speak more German than they speak Dutch. <laughs> so, I had them, and they, they <coughs> obviously had to do all the repairs. I wasn't doing any repairs. Sure. You were the brains behind the operation. Uh, well, I had to organize them, you know, yeah. make sure that things are happening. And so you were able to use your, uh, your, your native language uh, with, with, mm -hmm. with these employees. Absolutely. And you were happy about that, I bet. That, that would work pretty good. Sure. I was in immediately. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know how it goes. So. Um, and how did, how did the civilians, tr like you, how did they treat you? Very well. I mean, they were very good. I, well, I treated them good, too. You know, I mean, it goes two ways street. <laughs> what were your living accommodations there? I, we lived on the, on the economy. We have a, a, a villa in, in town uh, that I rented. And you know, Alice knows all about that one. Did, and, she, did she come over? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. We packed up in Al in Alex uh, Fort Belvoir, and sure. everything was shifted over. All right. Uh, and of course, Alice didn't speak any Dutch, so that was a a, a turnaround for me not speaking any English. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a a, a nice uh, officers' club there, and of course, all other Americans that were stationed there. We had a little attachment that. 
search for the Germans and and the French had an attachment down there. So, sure. Uh, uh, and the English, not to forget, uh, they have a very nice officers club, so we could always meet you know, Americans and whoever you want to sure. in interact with. Uh, very, very, very nicely uh, operating, uh, operating, uh, e or not economy, but operating, uh, place good to be, let's put it that way. So, uh, while you, while you were there, what uh, what's the most interesting thing that you did while you were over there in in, in the Netherlands at that base? Well, for one, uh, I had a very responsible job, so I knew everybody. I know everybody. Sure. Um, Is there anything that stands out in your mind? Well, we tra matter of fact, we we, we traveled. Uh, <laughs> The Netherlands, Alice and, and I and Kevin, they, they were kids. We, we, we tra the kids, my kids weren't there anymore. They went back to Hawaii, by the way. So it was Alice, my young born, and myself. We traveled the Netherlands, but she'd never been there before, so we, that was the highlight of, the, of a lot of things, Good. you know. But, uh, Did you go into Belgium at all? Oh yes, I had a base in Belgium. I was a base across the border. In but Belgium. did you travel there with Alice? And uh, yes, we did. I did. Yeah. So uh, the job was a very nice job. Very, very, had a lot of responsibilities, but everybody worked together. It was, it was, it was the best job ever to close out my military career. Good. Uh, did you get to uh, Brussels? Yes. Bruges. You get to Bruges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we, I went to Brussels quite a lot because of um, uh, uh, money, money issues for the, for what we needed the, in order to troops. maintain uh -huh. maintain those bases and <coughs> things like that. So did that a lot, uh, and of course Germany, been in Germany quite a bit again. <laughs> so you you had I think you said you had a hundred people working under you. Y yes, those were the. D d d so, d what, what were they paid in? Were they paid in uh, d Dutch they money? Were, they were paid in guilders. Guilders. They, they, they were Dutch nationalities. Okay. Uh, there were none that were paid anything else, but all local. They were all local people. Mm -hmm. Carpenters, uh, electricians. Sure. Tradesmen. Uh, tradesmen. Uh, so that was your last military assignment. And, uh, well, no, that, no, that's not totally true because when my, uh, we stayed there for over five years, I got a wrong assignment. That that was pretty nice, wasn't yeah, it? You bet. We, uh, so what what are we talking about? Uh, when did you leave? Uh, when did you leave Holland? We left at seventy four, right, Alice? Seventy nine. Huh? Seventy nine. We've been here oh, yeah. at least since eighty one. Yeah, seventy. Yeah, that's right. Seventy nine. We left. Seventy nine. And. <clears throat> We went back to Fort Belvoir. I had to. I hadn't put in my retirement papers yet, but I went to Fort Belvoir and uh, uh, went back to our old home at Fort Belvoir. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that, uh, and and then I got orders to go to the, the office of the chief of engineers in Washington D.C. The home of my chief, chief boy engineer boss. The big boss. <laughs> the big boss. Uh, I did that work for about 60, 90 days, and I told Alice, well, Alice saw an advertisement in the newspaper uh, that a Dutch company was coming to the United States to uh, introduce their method of, of sales. And, uh, so it was kind of a warehouse type operation company. I knew people, I knew some of the people there because I dealt with some of them in Brunson. They have a, uh, a place there. So I said to Alice, well, maybe let me check out and see what they have to offer. And uh, I went to interview with them, and it was all home week. Right off the bat, uh -huh. so I said, 
Yeah, you remember macro? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I said, Alice Dundee, uh, at that time I didn't care what I got paid. I just wanted to make a change. That's it. Uh -huh. done. So I put in my retirement papers for the chief of the engineers and I, I started working for them in Washington, D.C. so I could stay in my home and just walk over to Morgan. So were you a major when you retired? No, Lieutenant Colonel. Okay, when did you become a <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel? That was in the Netherlands, by the way. I forgot about this. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't worry about the promotions. I mean. <laughs> well, you got to worry yeah. about promotions. Yeah, I do. Promotion I, means more money, doesn't I it? I did. I did worry about it. <laughs> that promotion, yeah. More money and more money in retirement, too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. better than when I went in. <laughs> Jeez. So uh, you you went in in August of '59 and you got out in uh, June of 1980. Yeah, first yeah yeah first June. That's right. Yeah, yeah, June of 1980, and then you go to work for this Dutch company. Right. And what what were you doing for the Dutch company? I was their facilities engineer. Okay. And I was responsible for the construction of all their their new companies. The new buildings, new new facilities. Well, where was that, that located? That one of them was located right in in by Washington D.C. Okay. Uh, yeah. They they were just into, they were introducing themselves into into the United States. So. And that company was Macro M A K R O. Yes. And That's that a self service uh, company. Uh, for mostly for uh, for companies with that have to have the pre-sale uh, items. In other words, you, you buy stuff in big gross in big quantities for resale so in small businesses. Big box, big box store. Big box store. <laughs> That's it. Big box store. Yeah. yeah. So then, uh, at one point in time, after that, you be, you come to Bigs. In Cincinnati. Well, well for, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we I traveled with Marco. We built about three facilities: one in Atlanta, and then one in. Uh, Tampa. And then, in. No, that was that was Biggs. Was that Biggs? Yeah, and uh, one in one in Washington D.C., one in in here in Cincinnati. And one in Atlanta. So okay. We had three buildings, and uh, so we we uh, we eventually moved to Cincinnati. But I moved my family over here because they were closing up any facilities over in Washington D.C. So that's how we got here to Cincinnati, right here into this place. So <laughs> when you when you were building a facility here, you kind of liked the area, and uh, yes. So we did. as opposed to moving somewhere else, you decided to come to well, Southwest Ohio? Well, I wanted to Ohio. stay with them because, you know, we were doing pretty good. And I, I saw, <coughs> I thought maybe that company would would become something that I would stay with. But unfortunately, that didn't happen because uh, after three stores, they figured out that they weren't doing that well. And so they, <laughs> they tried to sell off, s sell the company to somebody else. And, I told Alice that, 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 that is, I'm not going to do that. So I, the advertiser went to a company, and there's a French company coming to town. <laughs> I said to Alice, I, said, well, I might as well apply over there <coughs> and see what, what's, what's up. So I, I went there, and I got there and put my, I talked to the, the, the president of the company, and he, he was really nice, very good, good. Very good guy. From the years. Oh, God. God. Are you okay? What? I hope we're not there. Yeah, it's all off. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. Oh, you thought it was off? I was making sure I. Yeah. No, I'm watching that. Well, I know that's on, but. So I came, I came to. Uh, are you okay? Yeah. I, I, I went for the interview and. Uh, I have my resume. <clears throat> Pretty well in good shape, and 
I was on my way home, and, and they said, we want you to come back. I said, what do you mean, I'm come back? <laughs> uh, well, uh, would you please come back? And sure. So I came back, and he, the, the, the president of the president said, we, we want to hire you. I said, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I couldn't believe it. So is this going because on I, in English or is this going on in French? No, that was going on in English. And I, I told him, you know, that I, I'm somewhat, uh, I know the language somewhat French, so you know, I can be a good, good service to you. So I joined them and I stayed right here, you know, just my, my place. And uh, we, built <coughs> we built all this, I was responsible for the same thing there all their building and equipment buying and you name it the whole package to just to do a building so that they could merchandise it and do their proper sale prop sales properly so i was responsible to make sure that it was all done because i had a lot of people working for me here and there but it was more than one one man man job <laughs> but uh, that was very, that was very 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 good uh, introduction. So. Uh, so was that the Biggs company? That was Biggs. B I, I worked for them for 22 years. B I G G S. Yes. Okay, and you worked for you, them. You probably know Biggs. Uh, I'm not from Cincinnati. Oh, you're not. <laughs> oh, but. Uh, have a big grocery chain. It's just like Myers and. I know. Okay. <laughs> Oh yes, uh, and you, and and you, and you. So did you did you stay in the same home all the time you were here in Cincinnati? Yes, this is it. Same where, where we are here today. Forty years, forty-one years. Forty-one So when did you finally retire? I from retired Biggs? in what it ninety-six. I think it was ninety-six December of ninety-six. Yeah, so ninety-six. Something like that. I, well, it's not on your sheet here, but uh, December '96. Okay. Uh, have you done anything since you retired? Have you done any volunteer work? Have you done any part-time jobs, or are you just kind of enjoying retirement? I've, I've been enjoying retirement, and we were we were boated. We were boating on the river. I had a boat, two two boats, and. Uh, Enjoyed the river and we joined the uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary. The what? The Coast Guard oh. Auxiliary. Okay. Uh, Retired uh, from that too. But, but, <laughs> but you say you use the river, you're talking about the Ohio River. The Ohio River. We had, uh, and Alice, you, you can get the picture quickly, and we had a, uh, two boats. Behind you. Oh, Tall yeah, but you can't, you can't see that. Well, let me, uh, let me see if Mary can yeah. pick up this photo. Oh, got it. Can you see it? Now, who is that? that Who's that a photo of? Uh, Otto Weening. <laughs> Two. <laughs> and about how old are you in that photo, Otto? Well, that's 74. Oh, well, it was in 74? So, so it was about 50, 50 years old. 30. 50. No, 74. 74. I think uh, so. so. About 39. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my ribbons were austere. They're, they're only little. <laughs> uh, can you see this photo? <laughs> yes. That's you and Alice? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's an article about you in the Montgomery Neighbors uh, mm -hmm. publication, February 2022. And I don't know if Mary can pick up this photo of you. Let's see if she can get it. That's the one right there. Can you get it? Oh, yeah. All right, now, where are you in this photo? Where are you in this photo? Right there. Yeah, but where are you? What, where is this taken? Oh, that is in uh, 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 um, God. Uh, Fort Benning, Fort Benning, Georgia. I'm sure it is for Fort Benning, we're in a truck. I thought you had said that was at a, when you were first lieutenant in Germany. 
I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still. Uh, this says First Lieutenant Otto Weening serving in Germany, 1960. Oh, okay, that, that, that's yeah. it. And there's a white bar on your helmet. What's that mean? First that, Lieutenant. Uh, First Lieutenant. Okay. Well, I just. Sorry, to... Pat. I mean, that was a, that was a curveball. <laughs> 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 well, let me see. Uh, well, how about uh, 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 Do you have those pictures? I'm not going in there because the dog's in there. Oh, wow. Uh, so, uh, we've got uh, your children, Scott Weening, and he mm -hmm. is 62. Correct. And Erica, her last name is Raquel, R A K E L. Raquel, right. Raquel? And she is 60? Correct. Uh, and then you have Chris, K-R-I-S, Weaning. Correct. 58. Correct. Adrienne, A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Weaning. Correct. 57. Then you have Kevin that passed away in 2013. Right. Um, no, he, he died in 1986. At, thir at, the age at the age of, the age of 13? Mm -hmm. Okay. At the age of 13. Uh, what, what, what happened to Kevin? He, uh, he had an, un uh, an unforeseen accident on the street by uh, falling off his skateboard. Oh, shoot. Hitting his head and oh. fracturing his, what does that call that? Fractured skull. Fractured skull. Fractured skull and back and died on the street. Oh, God. Right the That's terrible. Man. Uh, so, uh, while you and Alice have been married, uh, she worked outside the home? Yes. Alice uh, worked in the uh, intensive care unit uh, here in Bethesda North Hospital. Oh, that's just close by? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that was one of the reasons. We, we bought this home because we were close, uh, close by. Uh huh. Of course, there wasn't very much here at the time. So she no. worked in intensive care. Yeah. What were her hours? Did she work days or nights? Or? Very, right, Alice? That very, actually a lot of night work was, was going on. Because uh, Kevin was still here and somebody had to take care of him, you know. So uh, uh, what do you do with the Coast Guard? The Coast Guard, we, we uh, well, first of all, we had, we had our own boat. We had a, we had a, I mean, you, you can see it over here mm -hmm. on this picture. We had a 60-foot boat and all self-accommodating. <coughs> and we, uh, we patrolled the river with that boat for the Coast Guard, okay. for the real Coast Guard. Uh, so that was, that's how it, and, and of course we were part of the, and that is Coast Guard Auxiliary. Um, and that's what that's what we we do mostly. That's all we did. Uh -huh. we, we, that was, we, that's we, a volunteer. Yeah, we were a, volu a volunteer, but we we got paid. I mean, we did it. Uh, they paid for our gas. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we did that for fifteen years. Since we were here in the Coast Guard, we had two boats, one a smaller one and a bigger one. Did you have any occasion to rescue anybody on the river? Uh, no. No. Not in a big boat. I mean, the little ones we did. Did you? We, have, we had little, smaller boats that so. were easily accessible to anybody that may have been in, in, in despair. So could you give me an example of somebody that you may have had to rescue? Was that well, just the, their motor went out. And here they're in the middle of the river. Okay. And they can't do anything. They can't jump in. So we have to go after them to make sure we pull them out. And right. Bring them back to shore. Uh, that wasn't that kind of a thing. Uh, or somebody got sick. That uh, so we had, had, to get, had to be brought to shore. And, uh, you know, be uh, connected with the local fire department so that they get to the, to the hospital. So, so on, on your military career, your best job was the five years you were in the, in the Netherlands, and your most dangerous was over when you were Vietnam. flying around in Vietnam, uh, getting shot at. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Did you have any uh, injuries uh, while you were on duty? Get any Purple Hearts or any? No Purple Hearts, but uh, I did. You know, I I got the normal normal difficulties. Like, Go to the dispensary, but I think. Oh, yeah, but you didn't have any injuries? No. Okay. Agent Orange. You, did you get any... Uh, Agent Orange, but, you know, that... Obviously, in the area of Agent Orange. So did you see them uh, dispensing Agent Orange? Well, did you I... Did you see the planes flying over spraying it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact. And yes. uh, how close were you to that... Uh, Spray well, operation. long men was sprayed all the time because it was sprayed for bugs and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, other places, they do the same thing. They just fly over. Uh, and, I understand that uh, Agent Orange came in a variety of different colors, too. You I, know? I never saw any okay. different colors. Matter of fact, I was partially colorblind, so I wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at your DD-214, uh, and I'm just going to go through these with you. You got a Meritorious Service Medal. Yes. You got a Bronze Star with a first Oak Leaf Cluster. Correct. And what was that uh, for? That, that's a Vietnam War. Okay. Uh, you got a Joint Service Commendation Medal. What was that for? That's for uh, the Netherlands. You got an Army Commendation Medal for what? Uh, that was, uh, oh, my God, where am I? Just being in the Army? No, no. You had to be somewhere to, to get it, but that was, I, th I think I always got that in Vietnam as well. Okay. well way before then. Uh, I have, I... You have a Master yes. Parachutist badge. Yes, yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, ma a load master. Then uh, you got a ver uh, Vietnam Service Medal. Yes, everybody had that. Vietnam Campaign Medal. Yes. Another one everybody got? At a campaign, if you were in, in Vietnam, okay. you, you will have it. You know. And you had a Vietnam Cross of Gallantry with Palm. Now, how did you earn that? that because we were in various uh, uh, critical operations and we were awarded that. You're getting shot at when you're going out yeah, on the... <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. That's, that's what, you know, not everybody got that, but I, right. I think we... I got that, and there's, there's a lot of other people there, but yeah, in but, my uh, area, you know. It's, uh, you, you earned that because you're, you're out there flying these planes getting shot at. I know, but I didn't have anything to show for it. That was good. Uh, that, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> thank God. Uh, yeah. You got a National Defense Service Medal. Yes. You got a Vietnam Honor Medal. Now, how would that differ from the other Vietnam medals you got? The Vietnam Honor Medal is just for being in Vietnam, and the, the uh, Vietnam uh, uh, government gave, gave us that medal. Okay. Uh, you got a Legion of Merit. Uh, right. That's for my retirement. Okay. And you got a v Defense Meritorious Service Medal. Correct. And I got I got medals from from the Coast Guard. <laughs> Quite a few. Well, it's not. I, I, that's I because you it wasn't on your DD two fourteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, that's all I can think of right now. Uh, Mary, do you have any questions you'd like to ask uh, Otto? fascinating career uh, and I'm more interested in the Coast Guard surf. <laughs> yeah well uh, how about Alice you got any questions or anything that we've kind of left out? No I'm just very proud to be his wife and be able to participate in this because I knew nothing about the military when I came into this family. Uh -huh. She was going to quit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and being Are we able still to on? share yeah. the end of his career with him. Good, good. And one, one of your good friends, Ken Bowman, is, uh, has joined us. Uh, Ken, did you have anything you want to ask him or bring out? Um, I think a story that Alice told about Mrs. Weens' teas.
oh, when yeah. they were in Indonesia it was a unique story to share. Yeah, that's terrific. His mother was the most positive person in this world. To have lived through what she lived with in the in the prison camp, you can look at us. Cause okay, and um, she she told me about things that they used to do in the camp, when, where they had nothing. I can't. So imagine. every afternoon at four o'clock, the ladies of the camp came to Mrs. Weening's compound in their best clothes, <sighs> if you can imagine, for tea at oh. four o'clock. <laughs> You didn't have tea, but you had a cup of water, and you pretended it was tea. Oh. And you shared every every day at 4 o'clock, like you were having a tea party. Jeez. This was like her. And then another thing she used to do, she told, she told me that the children, everybody got a handful of rice. Do you remember that? A handful of rice in the camp. And Mrs. Weening would pick out the white grains of rice and put it in a separate container. Mm -hmm. And when it was your birthday, you got white rice. This was her way. And then she told me also, Otto couldn't, he hadn't gone to school, so she took a stick and taught him how to write in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And um, just some of those things that she used to, she used to smuggle through the fence. Mm -hmm. material to make her children clothes. And I, get, I don't know if she got snub, smuggled or she got a gold mm -hmm. wedding ring stolen by the Japanese. And, oh yeah, when Otto was traveling with a few things from his home when they were moved by the Japanese, she took her sewing machine, which I have over here, it's a little singer, and he used to carry it, it's very heavy, and he used to sit on it wherever it was they went. So she, I have her original sewing machine. He was six and he's 87, so it's what, 61 years old. And um, I have it here from the, she used in the prison camp. She made, she made clothes with that little she machine. She used to smuggle through, to, through the fence. And I don't know what she smuggled, but she got material to make clothes for her three children. Food, food, food also. Food, food. also. Yeah. I wondered how she kept three children healthy, you know, relatively healthy. Right. I think that your experience then is what has made you have such a wonderful life. Oh, I agree. And, you know, you're, you're, you learn very early to adapt. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I, I've lived in the United States now for a long time, but I hate to say it, but a lot of the people that are here don't know, they have no appreciation for anything. Right. Uh, they, 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 you know, and, and not to get, that's not politics, but you see it on TV all the time. I'm hungry, I don't have any money to make. These people could make do if they wanted to, and, and, and most, some of them, not all of them, but to make do and get over the hump and then be, have the good and welfare uh, uh, ingredients to, to get better yet when it's over with, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't think. So that, that's do you, do you remember, uh, now that Alice has told us about some of your education, do you remember your mom uh, uh, showing you how to write in the dirt? Sort of, but you know, he, Yes, I do. Did she try to show you how to count in the dirt? That, that's it. That's the, the main thing. Uh huh. Uh, but in Dutch, you know. <laughs> the, the dirt and the Dutch in the dirt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have one, one thing to add, but that's about Alice. And when we came to the Netherlands, she didn't speak any Dutch and nothing and tried to get along. And we had neighbors that come over and they, they didn't speak any English and make a long story short, when we left the Netherlands, that lady there spoke Dutch pretty good. She, she, she learned the language over good. there. Good. And now, when I get, you know, talk to her, 
sometimes and, and say it in Dutch, and she understands everything that's going on. So you can't get mad at her and yeah. speak Dutch, and she understands what you're saying. Uh, no, that's not fair. Absolutely. No, but she's, she's pretty good. <laughs> the neighbors, she, she picked up the, uh, before we left, she picked up the phone and called the neighbors and talked to them in Dutch and on her phone. That's a pretty good, good accomplishment yeah. to be. Dutch is a very hard uh, language to learn. That's it. Yeah. So one thing, Pat, I wanted to tell you that uh, we, he found out, or Otto's dad found out that oh, yeah. they were supposed to die in a mine one month from the day the drop bomb was dropped to end the war. Wow. They were scheduled to die in a mine, the oh. whole family. Oh, wow. So yeah. he's lucky to be here. Yeah, I see. Um, she, yeah. We found that he, they found that he found that out after the fact. So what they were going to they were just going to put you in the mine and seal the mine? That's what that's what the plan was. Uh -huh. And my dad was of course in the service. And when when this was all over, like I told you, they they got, they still in the service. So see, he 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 got a, he was in the, in the uh, the army uh, quartermaster corps and had all these different plans and. Stuff and then he, he he found his plan that said wow. yeah, uh, that was that was the plan. They were just 30, in, within the next thirty days. So. Yeah, they were just get a whole bunch well, of people from this concentration right. camp and put you them just in. Put, put put you in to close the door and that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, wow. So we yeah. feel very that, lucky. That, that's with more a little Putin thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, yeah, we've been at this a long time. Okay. Thank Pat. you for your service and okay. thank you for this interview. It's been okay, wonderful. Pat. I appreciate it. I don't think we left anything out. <laughs>